this episode is sponsored by Yoshino. As summer draws to a close, I've been doing my best to catch up with all the odd jobs I've been putting off until now. But my main goal for the day is to set up the kitchen, starting with the cabinets and finishing with a home-cooked meal.
I just picked up this power station for the cabin, which I'm really excited about. Because unlike traditional lithium-ion power stations, this is solid-state technology. Now for full disclosure, this episode is sponsored by Yoshino. What they've managed to achieve with this product is truly a breakthrough in portable power. In fact, they are the first company to utilize a true solid-state battery in a portable power station. So why is solid-state power such a big deal? Well, instead of using a liquid electrolyte, like all traditional batteries do, the B4000 uses a solid electrolyte, which is superior for several reasons. First of all, solid electrolytes are safer because they aren't flammable and can withstand higher temperatures. Secondly, they have double the power density, which means that the B4000 is roughly half the weight of lithium-ion power stations with the same output. Although the B4000 is only 50 pounds, it boasts a 2.6 kilowatt capacity with a staggering 4 kilowatt output and a 6 kilowatt surge. To put that into perspective, this is my 4 kilowatt panel, which runs the entire cabin. Lights, outlets, tools, and appliances. The Yoshino B4000 has the same 4 kilowatt output as this panel. Thirdly, the B4000 has a much longer lifespan. To be more specific, at 2500 cycles, it will last two and a half times longer than traditional lithium ion batteries. Finally, the B4000 can operate in colder temperatures. For example, lithium ion batteries with their liquid electrolytes can only charge when the temperature stays above freezing. Solid state batteries, on the other hand, like the B4000, can charge in temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's take a look at the features. It can charge from 0 to 80% in just 70 minutes, and it can reach full charge in 90 minutes. It has two AC outlets, two USB ports, two USB-C ports, DC output, 30 amp RV outlet, and it can even charge devices wirelessly. You can either charge the power station with a household AC outlet, DC car outlet, or with solar panels, which Yoshino offers in their product lineup. If you'd like to check out Yoshino products for yourself, there's a link in the description below. Now let's finish the kitchen.
With the kitchen mostly together, I decided to explore the waterways before supper. Feels good to be back on the water again. Yeah, actually I just was at Bass Pro yesterday and I picked up the kayak and uh, that explains the hat as well. But it is, it's really nice to be out here. <clears throat> I've just been so focused on getting the cabin completed and working on that, that uh, I just haven't really found the time until now to be out on the water. I've got this whole series of lakes to myself and it's just really nice. Now the kitchen isn't done yet. <clears throat> I still have uh, some things that I want to complete. First of all, to get that, that sink hooked up. Uh, which will involve having a, a water tank and a pump as well. I need to install the drain pipe. I need to do that in the, the bathroom as well. But maybe I'll do it with the kitchen first so we can use it. And then uh, actually with the countertop, uh, I've got some green sheet metal on top right now just to protect the wood. But uh, eventually I'm going to make it a copper countertop, which I think is going to look amazing. And then I'll do uh, copper in the cabinet doors as well. And for, for the cabinet doors, I'm gonna do a distressed patina or a forced patina. Uh, and it'll have uh, you know, splotches of green and blue and the, the copper as well. I think that'll be a nice pattern. But for the uh, countertop, I'll just leave it as is and I'll let it gain a natural patina over time. The cabin is feeling more like a home now. The kitchen's pretty much done. It's half done anyway. It's, it's functional for the most part. Uh, I've got my cook stove set up on top. It's just a camping cook stove. And initially I did think about putting the cook stove uh, in setting it into the actual countertop. But I'm going to try it with the, the camping cooktop for now because the nice thing about it is when I'm not cooking with the cook stove I can fold it up and put it away and then I've got some more counter space which is really nice and then once the bathroom is hooked up that'll be it'll be ready for the winter time and I'm hoping to get the cabin pretty much set up for Christmas I know I say that a lot I've said that a couple of years in a row now that I want to get the cabin ready for Christmas but I want it to be like a livable home now with the running water the functional kitchen the bathroom uh, my next job is going to be to make a, a nice bed for the upstairs and then I'll furnish the downstairs and maybe have a pull-out couch by the fireplace so there's multiple places to sleep. I still have to build the front porch but I think that's going to be a job for next year. Uh, my main goal is to get the inside livable because I really want to start bringing my family out with me to the cabin. I've wanted to have my wife out with me a lot more, um, but she's been suffering from a neurological disorder, which uh, is quite debilitating for her. Uh, so it's hard for her to get out to the cabin, you know, just for a day and then have to come back home again. So my plan is to make the inside of the cabin livable, comfortable for my wife and daughter. And that way they can just stay there. If my wife's having a, a bad day and she needs to rest, then uh, she, can, she can rest at the cabin and I can continue to work or take our daughter around the trails or whatever, but uh, they'll be right there with me, which I'll really like. It's been a little lonely sometimes being at the cabin on my own, especially with my dad gone now, uh, although it is really peaceful, but it can be lonely sometimes. I just uh, have been wanting to have my family out there for so long and now I see that in sight and it's gonna be exciting to have them with me. In the near future, I'm hoping to have my wife out to have her on an episode with me uh, just to give an update on her health situation and uh, of course I just just like like having her with me so it'd be nice having her on an episode uh, she's dying to cook a good meal in that kitchen as well so 
I better get it finished. So that's my priority. Anyway, I'll see you back at the cabin. Now that I've gotten a good start on the kitchen, I decided to turn my attention to these cedar tusks, which I harvested last year, and it's taken me just about as long to figure out what I'm going to do with them, but I think I finally settled on it. Have you guessed it yet? These pieces are the beginnings of a rustic bed for the upstairs loft. And these curved pieces in particular will be used in the footboard and the headboard as well. I've been saving this old antique wooden wheel for many years now and now's the time to use it. So I think I'm going to incorporate it into the footboard, maybe the headboard, but I'm not so sure just yet. I still have to finalize the, the design of the bed. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing in the next episode. As well, I'll be installing the copper countertop, hopefully, which will set off the look of the kitchen. It'll look amazing with the copper on top and the copper uh, in the panels of the cabinet doors. So uh, there's lots I have to do before the winter comes. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, be well, and God bless.